Do you remember what happened last time? Or what we're doing? What what this whole map is about? Why that's I... there? What we what is this? We've gone really traveling to to the Orient on the train. <laughs> There's been a murder. Yeah. Um, yeah, like these were the train lines right over here. <laughs> we went through. And sheep is playing a gentleman with mustaches and a bowler hat. Who will solve the uh, murder? But on a more serious note, I, I think I can summarize what happened. Uh, we went to fix the problem with Gorholgrim's forge being occupied. And we went down there to find out that it has been occupied by like elemental dwarves, which were like, what, what are they called? A Azers or something? Yeah, Azers. Uh, who were apparently there, needing the full capacity of the forge to forge their like bronze golem offspring, which is a bit weird. They they weren't very talkative, but we we like looked around and saw that yeah they they're going to need the forge for years probably, which means we can't use it, which means. We sort of had to decide between getting fire resistant armor and killing like the Aces who were doing something fairly important for like the entire race or whatever. And we just decided to you know, let them be. Try to try to get them to give us something in return, but they didn't have anything. They promised us to leave enough bronze for us to make something with it, but honestly I'm still not entirely sure what they actually offered us, but it it's like maybe, golem maybe, something. Maybe the bronze is actually worth something. Maybe we can sell it for money. It's it's bronze. I mean, you know, a ton of it might be worth something. But they're, they're not even done yet, so they, they haven't given us anything yet. They'll leave us some if there's any any left. That's how I understood it. But anyways, we, we talked to them. We went to leave again. And then a... Uh, what was he? A, a servant of the Sultan, certainly, uh, who was like a, a huge horned humanoid or something, uh, who came there to kill the Aces because the Sultan probably wanted them dead or something. It was like other plain politics, not too interested really. But what we were interested in is the fact that he was a douche. Uh, not only was he a douche, but he also uh, wanted to kill the people we just let live. So that's that's not what we wanted. So we attacked him instead. Uh, he uh, didn't end up dying. He actually teleported, plane shifted away, probably to put a, us on the Sultan's list of eternal grudges or whatever. But surely that won't be a problem. Um, you know, you know, he can get in line behind all the demon princes. How about that? Yeah, exactly. We, we have bigger problems. Yep. He did basically offer us whatever we could wish for if we did kill the Aces, but since he was so free in actually giving us whatever the hell we asked for, offering us infinite sums of money, we were suspicious to the point where we just decided. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like when you, when you actually give what we ask for, we get very suspicious. <laughs> this is where he was actually genuine. And mm -hmm. Like he's back at home, like, God damn, I was going to get this. Malachi guys was re ready with the magic item list and be like, yeah, pick whatever. Yeah, yeah I mean, when, when, you know, when you pick the Ring of Wishes and wish all the demon lords were gone, then we can get the King of Dragon Pass Dragon campaign, you know. Damn. <laughs> can we rewind time? <laughs> I wish I could oh, turn stuck with it now. back in time. Uh, What's happening? Yeah, and with that taken care of, you revealed us this nice hex exploration map with different areas and such, and told us, go wherever, there's the demons. If you take too long, everyone dies. Have fun. Uh, we also assigned some of the cohorts and troops we've been given. Uh... You can see that on the tunnels. Yeah. yeah. You have your little little uh, little travel order with Cinder there ruling from the center. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the caravan with three of us in the front and Liam and Riordan in the back. Yep. And I'm exporting all of the macros from the three guys that I have and importing them onto my token so that um, I know that they're there. And I don't forget about people. 
That is a good idea, actually. Also, I just managed to successfully spill, spill my drink all over myself. Good job. Ready. Hooray! At least you're keeping cool. You know, actually, given this day, that's actually not the worst. It's really warm. Ah, I And it is only water, so it's not like, you know... I just came from a family barbecue. Nah, oh, man. There's a barbecue going on, like, a couple doors down as well, and it smelled delicious. My, my major problem here is that we... That, uh, as students, we don't have access to the uh, to the heating system and the, air, the heating system in the building, and mm -hmm. for some reason, it's perpetually set to a tiny bit on. It doesn't help. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We're Basically. What we're, what we're doing here right now is uh, is a little bit of a an overland travel. You you have you have explored a lot of the other dark. You're you're pretty good at uh, at traversing it. However, traveling just through these random ass caves and actually navigating takes a lot of time. Demon lords are out here. They're doing things. They're corrupting the underdark, building power bases. You've seen some of that. Succubus trying to to take over the where our city, you know, like uh, mushroom people with rod madness, uh, Lincoln Stone with, uh, well, a bit of a collection of oozes trying to uh, to consume all of it. Demogorgon around the Dark Lake. You know where some of these things are going on. There are more demon lords, however, and there are more places you haven't been. Uh, and all of this is just going to keep getting worse over time. Yay. Effectively, at some point, it could be such a time where we just might die, all of us, because we've been too slow in dealing with the world. And uh, the opposition has grown so enormous that there might just not be a saving of some place or even all of it. That's terrifying. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say anything, but we've now been sent to find the place that I've been telling everyone to find in the first place. Oh, the drow city? Oh, the library. <laughs> I don't know, the, what, the library? No one's talking about the library. Effectively, yeah, any... what I'm telling you now is that that there's consequence, right, to, 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 to what you do here. Um, and that's why I wanted to give you bit of a more of an open idea instead of me picking where you go uh, you guys pick me and, and that makes it now traveling uh, the underdark is is very slow very slow as a matter of fact you get to travel six miles per day i have adjusted it so that each of these uh squares here is uh, 24 miles oh god as such uh, as you can see, travel is not fast in any any sense of the word. Jesus Christ. Uh, however, travel uh, along roads is much faster. Twice as fast. Hence, if you can get to follow these black lines, uh, you will travel much faster. That's what they mean. Other than that, to remind you, you have uh, I have given you uh, some information about some of the biomes you have scouted, basically, you know what's there. And it is not just more tunnels, which is what you have here. Uh, you visited those places. I've taken the liberty of marking them out for you. Gives you a little more information about where to go and what to do. As a basis, you know not what's in the surrounding tiles. Uh, however, if you take a week of time, a 10 day that is, being Forgotten Realms, uh, to build an outpost somewhere. Basically, this would be a place that is fortified, has beds, has a storage of food and drink, has like a, a permanent small garrison uh, sent from, from Gondolgrim. Uh, then you will have the opportunity to scout surrounding Hexus at the risk of your scouts or, or people you send out, or at the risk of increasing your own madness should you decide to scout yourselves. To have an idea of what you're actually walking into. Because being the Underdark, there's a lot of bad stuff out there. And, uh, well, we might just randomly never see it, it turns out. Okay. 
As characters, though, you also have been given a map. Maybe not as sort of correct as this, and also with attempted suggestions and scribbles everywhere uh, of, of different travelers and such. But enough that you can begin to make a plan. I think maybe we should start with, uh, you, you might all have some ideas of where you want to go as character, like as, as, as players, uh, but, but where do your characters want to go and what do you want to do? Celestial Realm would be great, but uh, we're stuck here. Leaving, leaving Gon Hulgrim, you know, you being the, there's effectively three, three tiers of leadership in your group now. There's you, there's your companions, and then lastly, there's the, uh, the troops who have been. I imagine you let your companions uh, watch in on the plan, uh, being that they're actually fairly, fairly few nowadays. Uh, three of them, in, in fact. Oh, Cinder is kind of too. So, yeah. as the five of you, Fargus, Eldith, Cinder, and Jim Jar, uh, gather around this, like, you know, like a little, little wooden platform you have with a with a with a map on it to to discuss where to go. Well, I for one think that's pretty obvious. We go to Metal Derek, we find out whatever we can about the library there, and then we head into the worm rivings, past the purple worms into the library to fix everything. Roland supports that plan, asterisk. <laughs> I mean, Liam says that, yeah, go to Metal Dare. This, yeah, that is a yeah, first good step. Um, Roland also good. agrees, go to Metal Dare first. But in his case, his motivations are more because, well, he's got his people, needs to, he's got people because he, he needs to find, and that's his best place to find them. We have a lot of character interests going into Metal Dare. So going there first seems to be a, a yeah, it seems to be a reasonable. I just think the Roland will not so leave Metal Dare until we find. And, Unless he's either forced out or he or he finds some clue to where to look. It's fine. We'll, we'll find them. Don't worry. He's getting more dead already. Possibly, but with, with it with it being an unknown, Roland's getting twitchier and twitchier by the day. Yeah. Does he does what matters compelling him? We did clear out that area near Blindenstone, Entermox Boon, as it is marked on our amazing map here. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps that should be our first place to go after we visit Mental Derif, and then from there we have an outpost to conquer the worm rivings, as, as it were. Conquer them. <laughs> I, I get very uncomfortable when you use the word conquer shield. Well, I could use traverse if you like, but that doesn't sound nearly as glorious. <laughs> Not all of us in this for glory, though some of us I imagine, but Liam. No, oh, we'll be legends after this. Liam, uh, you know, uh, stands up a bit straighter. He likes to be a legend. Mm -hmm. Just saying, like we'll be legends after this. Roland roll wants to settle down in some small town and just be a ranger hunting animals. Cinder stretches his draconic wings. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You know, Liam has pride in his uh, in his accomplishments and his achievements and his skills. He he would like some recognition. Hmm. Entermox Boon, of course, was uh, it was a, a a good location for an outpost. You did, however, also complete enough things in in Blinkenstone that that you effectively have one set up, it's waiting for you to garrison it. Sort of. Hmm. Cool. Uh, yeah. Who knows how the gnomes are doing, right? Mm -hmm. well, we'll find the, out when we get there. The gnomes are either doing fine or they're mad. One of the two. I mean, I hope they're doing well. We did a lot for them. I mean, they were, they were the first nice people we ever met, so we were sort of inclined to help them. It's true. Well, off to the place that will disintegrate you if you're not invited. Now, you know, once you once you get to the vicinity, the uh, Centaurum mercenaries will will know the way. You know, they, they've they've travelled. These, these places before, though. None of them, of course, wanted to go back to the Underdark with enough promise of pay. You know, anything's possible. 
I guess we fall, tried to follow the road, really. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a gap here, but we would assume that they, they hook up at some point, these two roads. I do like you say that that's unlikely. They used to, but due to, to cave-ins, like, different different movements of, of, of Earth and, and such, and just over time, like, it's likely that they have they have been broken. Part of me fears the cause is also purple ones. Well, let's follow the current road, yeah. but as far as we can, and then we'll see if we can have to you know, wear up, deer off the path. Yeah. Well, we well, we have what maps we have. We have our navigational skills, which are actually fairly good at this point. I think well, one can still never get lost. Let's set off at six miles per day. It's a, uh, it's a good speed. You need to go as far as you get to. I mean, there, there's one there's one big thing to say about the speed, which is at the speed, rolling away through a perpetual stealth if you wanted to. Yeah, it's it's basically because there's so many caverns and, and things and like no real way to tell which way to go. Sometimes there's backtracking. It's it's taking a long time. On the road here though, it's much faster. Uh, so you can you can really pass one of these hexes on uh, <clears throat> on just a single day. Council Grim has been cleared. It has been it has been scoured from a lot of the monsters that inhabited it. And certainly as you like begin traveling down this path, you can see the remains of a lot of them. Drow, skeletons, orcs, a lot of different things have just been thrown here as refuge or wounded wounded people who were not taken with them when, uh, when the forces of darkness some call them uh, retreated from the city, not being too caring people. This is sort of the view that dominates the area. You might might even encounter like a few stragglers and maybe a drider or two. But with a group such as yours currently, those are dispatched easily if you sit out. Moving over here. Traveling further, uh, it, it becomes less and less sort of civilized, more and more just, you know, like dilapidated and old. The dwarves do scout out to this point from Gondolgrim. Uh, it is one of those expeditions that Eldith, for example, disappeared. And you do indeed notice that in the deeper areas here of what would have once have been like border forts for Gondolgrim, there are uh, a lot of them that are full of this Vesren, the purple mist. Assuming you keep yourself away from those places, though, there's not anything particularly going on here. Any big threat would have been dealt with by God. As you move here, you get to the place where you sort of reach the end of the road. It is much as El just suggested, just a collapse, really. The big cave is broken. There's ceiling must have broken down. Who knows for how deep in. From here, you'll have to take some of the side caves, entrances, and travel into the unknown, really. It's, uh, you know, some people looking lingeringly at the road as you've been crawling into these much smaller passages, squeezing the, the cave lizards packs you know, through. So far, there's been little, little sort of mi mixing between the different groups of uh, NPCs you have. Most people keeping to their own faction. Going so far as to, like, eating apart. This has, however, also kept infighting to a minimum, if they had something. As usual, for our group, I, Roland's been cooking for our immediate group and everyone around us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you have, you have food, and uh, the idea is basically that Gondolgrim will send people after you uh, to find you and like bring you food. Once you have an outpost, they will be able to, to sort of take up the slack. We have a supply route, as it were. Yes. Yeah, Roland seems to be slowly getting more and more proficient with cooking as well, using, using strange, strange ingredients. So, given that you're now at the end of a road here, where do you wish to go? 
the paths ahead seem to just be... I mean, they're unscouted caverns. Could really hold anything, but... Yeah. I mean, immediately I would think I get here right here. Yeah, so we have a few options. I mean, so the main thing is, what, what is our goal here? Is our goal to try and hook up with uh, the, the other end of the road? Yeah. Ultimately, that, tells us yeah. Where, that, then, that would then tell us where we want to end up, right? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. We want to end up to Little Dareth, yeah. So. If, we want, if we want to end up here to connect to the road straight here, then logically... <laughs> Well, the best, best move would be to go, to go this way. Jesus, to, to waste as little movement as possible. It's exactly the same either way. Just a matter of flipping a coin, really. And I suppose, thanks to grid format. I mean... Well, I suppose the easy way of handling this is, uh... We can go down each person, find out if we want to go, want to go, want to go to the top tile or the bottom tile. Then we'll, <laughs> we'll go whichever one has more votes. Jim Jay wants to flip a coin. <laughs> you know what, Jim Jay? That's not the worst idea. Yeah. I actually like that. Flip a coin, Jim Jay. Where, the, where does the air smell the least foul? <laughs> The air is stale and terrible, and, and has sort of a, a strange scent of carrion, actually, from either. Oh, good. Great. Let's head south. <laughs> your, uh, so... your, 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 your biology certainly tells you to not go down these paths, but return from where you came. Mm -hmm. That's a much nicer place. I say we go here because we don't want to go close to a place called Worm Ridings. Yeah, I would say the same. Yeah. But it's where we have to go eventually anyway. Yeah, but that's so eventually. That's, yeah, that's later. That's... The, the furthest we can c keep away from the worm arrivings and those goddamn purple worms, the better. Right. Um, let you big. Yeah. Right. You want to take your way. Traveling through these caves, they're they're clearly much much smaller, and and suddenly the the sense of carrion as you travel for these days it now takes to to move through these caverns up and down, turn around, backtrack, try another one. It's frustrating work. It's a frustrating way to travel. You've done it before, uh, plenty, but a lot of your companions seem to expect uh, might have expected a sort of a faster trek, or at least to encounter something for a bit of it. A lot of the caves are very empty. And although you do find some of them that seems to have had camps in them and such before, there's not really much here now. As you continue on, you find, uh, you know, the, a sound. Voices. You can certainly recognize the mass. It uh, it sounds like sobbing. Many small voices doing it. You look ahead to investigate. It becomes clear that uh, it is a cacophony of methods. Sobbing. Sobbing method. I don't want to go near methods at all. Let alone sobbing ones. If we can't ignore them, I have the arm, that seems good. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to fight methods. I think I've seen enough methods. Certainly take a different turn and bypass them. The echo of their sobbing and loud, loud wails of anguish. Left behind. How many methods do we think there are? Hmm? I mean, how many methods do we think, we are, think there are? Oh, it's hard to tell. Like a dozen. Hundreds or de okay. Can't 
can't get myself to care about methods. Yeah, that was very difficult. They they caused us some problems. I mean, okay. I mean, they could be screaming for something bigger that's slowly killing them all. I mean, for fun. Uh... I mean, I mean, uh, Bjorn does speak abyssal, so maybe he can pick up something of what's going on. They don't speak abyssal. No, he of course he does. Huh? Yeah, but, but they don't. Oh, uh -huh. they don't? Oh, they no, they, they speak various elemental languages. Oh. They're not demons, they're just elemental. Annoying. But... <laughs> oh, very. Yeah, you, you can certainly pass by. Yeah, another thing that is with caves system here is that they're so disorganized. There's usually multiples leading to any one place. As you continue traveling down here, maybe maybe on the last day of going through the hex, another strange sounds come from a cavern ahead. Sounds like a man screaming, like he's being flayed. No coherent sound, just vocal cords being stretched to the limit again just keep going really unless something is like in the middle of the track in front of us i don't see a reason to veer off this <laughs> yeah, but... i mean can would would your, would your character be com would, would your character be comfortable leaving someone uh liam yeah in the underdark he has uh, he has learned that uh, anything and everything is not what it seems to be and creatures can mimic sounds you can plant visions in your mind. You can do everything in their power to lead lead you off, you know, the off the beaten path. And if something seems suspicious, it probably is. Uh, this really doesn't like it, but see. Well, you can be convinced, but that is his default. His default mode is like unless something literally stops us, there is no reason for us to go off our path. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I would certainly say right now, in Roland's current mindset, uh, with how long we were on the service for and everything, I would probably say Roland's probably so twitchy right now, given his madness, that he might he may not even realize sometimes he has to slow down at certain points. He's kind of looking at keep going. Could be a trap. On the other hand, if something around here is flaying methods and people alike, that would be something good to know about. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, yeah. Okay, so we're just gonna have to say that she wants to check that out. The methods were a different story, but when, it, when it's like a not an annoying method, might still be methods. It might be, but maybe the methods are doing the flaying. Oh, we can't have that. We can't. We can't. We can't allow methods to flay people. Nah. We wish to go and investigate it. I don't know if we wish to, but we're doing it. I think. I. I at least want to. I at least want to. I. Don't, I mean. Yeah. I'm just not... Cyrilla's not comfortable with it, but she's not going to go alone in case it is something horrible. I mean, if you, I mean, if you specifically stop Roland from just kind of being in a in a, in a, in a marching chant and chant, trance, and, you know, he'll, yeah, he'll he'll be wanting to he'll help Cyrilla. He, do, he doesn't want to let, leave Cyrilla alone. All right. I mean, she would do that anyway. But... Sure. Yeah. If we go to investigate, we'll go to investigate. It probably, it, probably, it probably won't consume that much time of us anyway. Approaching uh, towards it, it certainly sounds like this screaming is coming from rather sort of sound echoey chamber. Going there, you don't see it's true. Sort of almost a circular room. Three paths leading you entering from one of them. The other ones seem nondescript, really. Uh, in the middle of the room seems to be a small, what was a small camp. 
campfire of mushroom wood knocked over and stomped out. Around is scattered strips of leather and other pieces, equipment. What you see is a very bloated cave lizard in the middle of the room, just laying there, clearly dead on its back, seemingly having eaten like something as large as its own weight. Poking from its stomach region, you see the indentation of a humanoid figure trying to push his way out from within its stomach. The loud screams and, and, and horrible sounds coming from Well, maybe someone with a large sword should help this nice person out of the stomach. Or someone with more a more precise dagger. Sorry, so can you, uh, I, had a quick, I quickly respond to a message. What exactly are we facing here? Giant. The lizard has, the lizard has swallowed a person and he's screaming inside the lizard and wants oh. to get out. I feel like so, the large so sword are, should kill so the you lizard. Asking if I, you were asking if I would like to carefully bisect the lizard. Yes, bisect the lizard, please. I mean, I can carefully bisect the lizard. I've got sneak attack to do such. There you go. Liam is ready with a sword in case <laughs> more cutting is needed. As you open it, uh, basically out crawls the torso, uh, forearms, and head, no skin, clearly having been digested for days, ripping its way out. There's no legs attached to it, just a long tongue hanging out of a lacking jaw. As soon as it's crawled out of the open gut, it just breaks and collapses. Whatever this was, it certainly wasn't alive. Is it what? Or oh, demonic? We figure out what it was. All right, we set fire to it and leave. It I think. Used to have been a drow. Oh, okay. Who gives a shit? Let's that's, go. That's fine. <laughs> but even even that drow shouldn't be screaming. Do I see tracks nearby? Anything similar? Or signs of uh, like, yeah, you like a survival check. No. Oh. Investigation, I suppose, would work. Uh, which would you rather? You pick. pick. I'll go survival then. Alright. Given rolling and survival is also underdog attuned anyway, so. Can I aid yeah. that? Do you have a survival? Uh, yeah. Sure. I've you always had survival. Mm -hmm. Yep. In which case you aid it. So, uh, take the higher result of these two. We'll go with the 21. Yeah, looking around, it appears that a, a cave lizard rode in, or was ridden in by a drow. The scuffle seems to have occurred sometime in the night, as tattered sleeping bag suggests that this cave lizard swallowed its rider uh, unexpectedly and suddenly. On the one hand, it could be normal cave lizard behavior against a probably rather abusive rider, or a sudden occurrence of gluttonous hunger of some sort. Certainly possible. Is there, any clear, is there any clear sign of the drow's belongings? Uh, yeah, there appears to be a few things. Uh, mostly things that have been scattered and ripped apart. It seems the lizard was not happy just to swallow its rider, but also wanted to eat anything nearby. You can see bite marks even at rocks and the walls. Looking further inside, you see a lot of inedible things having bloated uh, the lizard to death. Wow. So, uh, definitely madness. I probably would like to a scout. Is there, like, a clear indication of, like, maybe a house, like a house you're gonna scout for, or anything like that? The clothes is too digested to, to tell. It has probably been a couple of days uh, before the lizard actually died from it. And I imagine no written note or anything? No. Whatever would have been there that's easily sort of destroyable, it has been destroyed. 
Most of what he finds like metal clasps and bits. And Which isn't that quite like that. anything around, given, you know, might not be in everything. But... Yeah, it certainly suggests that there might be drow somewhere nearby, but perhaps also that, well, if this is a trend, they might. And also comment that it's uh, possible this would have been a scout coming from one of the drow like regions close to Gauntlegrim, given that uh, they were banished from the city, it's unlikely that all of them were killed. Yeah. Well, it's good, uh, good to see that everything is improving nicely down here. With this <laughs> joyous experience, uh, you, you camp for the night. And uh, then you, you continue bringing, bringing in light. Switch, where, where do you want to go? Um, still southeast, I guess. Yeah, uh, I mean, southeast, why not? Yeah, southeast. To the road. I'm gonna just, uh, is it okay to draw on this map, Okay. Just, uh, uh what? what? Is it okay if I just draw, like, a line where yes. we've gone? Yes, yes. Alright, so yeah. I'm gonna do green line, which is this where we've gone. This is your map, gone. I have my own. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. We've gone this way, and it, it's okay so far. That's what the green means. Fine. Yeah, it's fine, it's all good. Oh, I have a, a um... Never like grow, surrounded by good. <laughs> I, I have, uh, made, uh, this guy for when it is not okay. <laughs> uh... Yeah. <laughs> okay, I do like this. <laughs> as, uh, as you continue traveling along this path, or through these caves, as it were, there's not really a path to follow, uh, you do you do stumble upon what seems to be the r remain basically of uh, of an old part of the of the way, the road, having a surprising bout of of traveling speed. Should you choose to follow it, that is. I mean, yeah. I want speed right now. We need speed. Need for speed. Sure. You follow it, uh, and and basically for a day, that is that is quick travel, making good headway. However, on the next, you get to a point where it has uh, clearly once more collapsed. Another thing you see, though, is that at the sort of the side of where it has collapsed, a single lone figure is sitting by a campfire, covered in a cloak. That's He's ominous. Covering, covering the camp. You can you can sort of smell the the, the scent of, of of roasted. Cave rodents. I mean, if he's in our way, then we might as well. What's the worst it could be? Indeed. Is he like acknowledging us in any way? Uh. Yeah, as you move closer, you certainly, as a big group, would make enough noise to the figure uh, turns and looks in your direction. His uh, skin is sort of a, a grayish, almost almost slightly orange tinted. He's got fangs and uh, a lot of scars. He looks to you. You can identify his armor as being that of a of a well made half plate, though uh, ill maintained. And next to him is a uh, a great sword leaning against the uh, side of. Did you say he's got fangs? Yeah. He'll uh, stand. As you come over, taking up his sword, and then putting it down. With a, with a frown. Well, greetings there. 
What brings a lone traveler in the underdark? A vampire. Yeah. We don't know that yet. We saw the fangs. I have fangs. I mean, but you're weird. <laughs> And you, I mean, you I mean, sort of had fangs as well, Liam. I'm, I mean, I used to, but I was aware of hyena them. And uh, looks, <laughs> used to, uh, looks down to the right as he steps closer to you, holding up his, his gauntleted hands. I'm no threat to anyone. I simply sought a place to rest. I'm sorry if I impeded your way, travelers. And didn't know the undead felt tiredness. That's very rude, Liam. Frowns. Very true. I'm not dead. Not yet, at least. Though it might be a blessing if I were. Perhaps that is something you could help me with. Fact. <laughs> Maybe. Liam <laughs> unhooks the sword. He nods. I wish I could ask you to do it in battle, but I have no such luck. That seems rather extreme, don't you think? Besides, there's battle to be had for sure where we are going. Yeah, he frowns. It's a bit of a suicide mission, really. I had hoped to find such a thing, but it seems that fate has given me no ability to fall in battle. Well, it sounds to me like a win-win situation. On the one hand, it is a suicide mission. On the other hand, most of us would rather it not be. So either we all die, making you happy, or we all don't die, making us very happy. You misunderstand, stranger. Fate has seemed to make me a coward. He spits the word out. Fate and not your own. I don't think that's what fate does. I used to be as brave as any of the others. Our company, we're not stationed too far away. But somehow it changed. Strange as I have become a coward. I cannot stand with my legion. And so I left, becoming a just deserter. Even with my lord's new orders, I would have followed him to the abyss. But I cannot. You cannot because fate make you a coward. All right. That, that's a new one, I have to admit. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a coward, but putting it on fate is a brother. Brown says there is everything wrong with it. If I die without fighting, I will never be able to follow the others to the eternal march. Battle is purpose, and without it, there is no purpose. I have deserted my legion. I have failed because my body does not stay when I wish for it to do so. It is the madness that dwells in these caverns that has afflicted me. But as far as I know, there is no cure. Well, madness and fate are two very different things. Although I suppose not always. I would say it is when it's lorded over by, well, lords of many different things. Wow. He's sort of doomed being down here. And who might you be, strangers? Why do you travel this place? You do not look to me like merchants. Well, I, for one, am Gash, and you would do well to remember the name because we are on our way to become legends. We'll save the world from this madness. We even have a way to do it. You know, 
Seems you should have been a bit faster then, Master Gash, if I may say so, meaning no insult. Faster how exactly? Although I do have to say I agree. We should have gone to the library a bit quicker, but good things take time or something. It's not too late yet, certainly. He seemed to know what you're talking about. Uh, In truth, you for... must have come from Gondelgrim. Why, yes, we did. It's another thing to put on my list of shame. That's a strange thing to put on a list like that, this city. Just, it used to be held by the drow. We were hired to support them. However, we did not make it in time for the battle. As such, my company and I, my, the company and I have been stuck here for years. I see. Well, I think it's rather fortunate that your company didn't arrive in Bobblegrim, because it is now in the hands of our allies. The Drow, while they have their uses, are particular allies at best. The Dwarves, more steadfast. They pay well. That, that is all is that true. mattered. The Dwarves are worthy foes in battle. It would have been glorious to fight them, defeat them in their own home. But there was no such luck. So you said earlier we could help you. Now, why exactly would we do that? What's in it for us? This would be the first time someone in the Underdark had asked me why they should kill me. Smiling slightly. That is a, a rare a, question. Just a bit of a waste, really. You what clearly I want to no one when I cannot fight. Well, you clearly have things you are looking forward to, even if you phrase it as regret that you can't do them. So surely you would want to stay alive to fight these demons, so the things you're looking forward to stay in existence, really. He looks at Gesh, slightly perplexed. I am not sure I follow. I'm no just offense, that... but the logic seems a bit twisted to me. I've been called worse. <laughs> All I'm saying is, Perhaps to fight the madness of cowardice, you simply need to do the most ridiculously dangerous thing you could ever think of. Surely then the madness would reverse itself and turn into bravery. I would attempt to slay you right now, that might work, but you see, should I attempt it, my body would surely drop my blade, be forced to step away from it, cowering. It is not an experience I wish to have repeated. Well, in that case, I suppose you're going to sit here forever lamenting your fate. Um, I do have a uh, out of character question. Uh, in Cyrilla's own mind, I suppose, would be um, I don't know of any demon that would give a curse of, of cowardice. Particularly, mm -hmm. would Cyrilla be right in that presumption? Sure. Uh, I don't believe either that there is any demon that has the specific madness of cowardice. Yeah. However, uh, specific madnesses don't just exist. There's also general. Okay. Do you think the idea of like suppressing it so we can like one final battle? Or... Yeah. Exactly. Um, exactly what I thought. It's certainly an option. 
Alright, Cyril will take a, a step just in front of Gesh and say, uh, what if I could uh, suppress your madness for just long enough for us to kill you in a glorious battle? How long would that be? Shrugs. I suppose it depends on how good a fighter you are. That's just twice the waste of resources. Had I the will, I would return. I can... My commander, Lord Theest, he led us down here once upon a time. He has been a good commander to us all these years, though we have been unable to leave given the dwarven takeover of Gondolin. Had I the bravery, I would challenge him and die fighting him because I believe what he's going to do is not only dooming himself, but my entire legion spend eternity in the abyss instead of the Iron God. My kind, we fight. You may not know much of us. I will not blame you for such things, for that would suggest a lack of understanding on your kind. However, what he's going to do, be in the service of demons, it is not holy. Fighting for cultists, for tyrants, it does not matter, but different god? No. The mighty one will not. Who is fighting for demons, you say? Yes. Lord Theist. He is moving south. In his dreams, a black warrior has called upon him. A dark creature that promises him gifts and much more for joining his legions. Dreams are a very dangerous thing indeed. I fear that as madness has taken me, it might have taken him and some of the others as well. Were I there, I would likely follow him, but given the clarity of distance, I would oppose him. It is, would be better that they all died in battle here. For the mighty one, then should they join and die for a demon. How long would you need to hunt them, uh, hunt them down? I presume they're quite far away. No, they're very close. An old dwarven fort. Run about. Half a day from So, if you went there back, then, what would we gain precisely? Anything? I don't think anything. I mean, I was literally just gonna, I was offering the whole clear his mind of the madness so that we could kill him because, I mean, he gets his way, we can carry on, and everyone's happy. Um, it's real good to rest and get back to spells anyway. Exactly. Um, but if they're half a day away, that's half a day of travel, and then it might be a bigger fight, and why would we do this for a vampire and get at the moment we're not looking at getting anything out of it but then they're vampires they could have some cool shit yes it's so you can argue that we're depriving our enemy of a powerful ally yeah that's that's, that's, yeah, that's what yeah. i can think of here is your stuff would be would be hope would be possibly getting rid of vampires from demon's forces and vampires are it's kind, of, kind of terrifying no no they are not vampires this guy's not a vampire okay what is Breathing. he doing? 
he appears to be a, an, an old hobgoblin. Oh. oh. I mean, hobgoblins are still the more militaristic of the goblinoid races, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah. How many did he say were with him? Or were with him? He did. Okay, so we'll ask the question. Uh, how many are there? He nods and says, we are a dozen. A dozen hobgoblins. I feel like we can take... A dozen highly trained and, and armoured uh, hobgoblins. The weakest I... fell on the road here, and since then... We are mainly the guards of the Devastators. Quite I feel I feel like a dozen hobgoblins. They're not that big a deal. Should not... you aid me? He looks at you, catching on to what you're considering. I. Our place is stocked well with food, water. It is easily defensible. Outpost Our first outpost. Alright. All right. That's actually a pretty right. good thing. It is yeah. not massive. But should you seek a place that is somewhat safe in land, it is a good one. And I will tell you now going forward, should you continue on the track you are, you would want to know you enter or not we lost many trying to go that way okay so i'm hearing i'm gonna need the skull icon sooner than i hope hmm. i mean sure it's it seems I mean, for an outpost, it's pretty much worth it already. Yeah. All in favour? Not opposed. Or not opposed to it. Okay. The lack of eyes have it. Um, Hooray! The uh, careful scepticism has it. Yeah. So it'll uh, <laughs> look at the hobgoblin and say, uh, I think we're all in agreement. Um, show us the way. You know, that's, you will make me able to fight. She knows. That we'll need roughly like an hour. Uh, we, you got like an hour is the usual amount of time. And I shall take you there. And then get up, sword, and begin moving for the caves rather adeptly, mm -hmm. having stayed here for a long time, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm rather good at moving. Good, Liam. Sort of take a gander, take a take stock of him as he moves and carries himself and stuff to like figure out how good of a fighter he will be in the situation. Sure. Like an intelligence check or something to. Mm -hmm. I mean, nature, if you have it. Nature. Intelligence. Uh, I don't know if I have that. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm, you know, you know, given all the martial training I've had alongside Liam, okay, you know, we're both we're both fighters technically now. Yes. Getting the physique uh, and and sort of physical yeah. training of a, of a different species. To humanoids. Yeah. yeah. I was I was originally going to argue in, so I can also help to this. Sorry. The yeah. scepter that the most skilled fighter has a higher roll. <laughs> the top goblin has a lot of scars. Uh, he is he is uh, he's not badly trained. He's uh, he's fairly decent as as everything go. He is of course no hero, but uh, he could take out several several town guards. Hmm. Liam thinking a match of his own abilities. Liam could take out a town of guards. Liam, Liam could uh, could could kill this guy without much issue, but not with one swing. Okay. That sounds like he's really strong. Hmm. 
Yes. Uh, I just wanted to clarify, uh, Manakai, that it was the Greater Restoration that gave us uh, like a good hour from uh, any of these demonic madnesses. Oh, yeah. yeah? Okay. So in which case, Dawn has Every to... single one down and makes them be gone. Okay. Could be the amount of time. I must be gone. Yeah, so that means that Dawn has to go away for a, a bit and then... Uh, Oh, good. You want nuke me? Greater restoration will be in a f in the spell slot. I'm, I'm, I'm happy not being nuked by dawn. <laughs> dawn hurts. It'll be glorious one day. <laughs> one day it's going to be used and it's going to yeah. be nuked. He will ask you, uh, your, as to which side you wish, wish to approach. There will be guards on either. One some of the bugbears that joined them when they came down here, not came with them. Well, the other side might be a bit more cramped. We have for all of you to have a fighting stand there. I mean, we've got three frontliners. One that doesn't necessarily need to be in the front. Or two that don't necessarily need. I mean, to. I mean, I'm I'm very well. I can technically fight outside front line, though currently with the mercenaries, I do exceptionally lot, exceptionally large amount of damage in front line. Yeah. My damage is significantly spiked. In the mercer. Uh, I'd be more inclined to the smaller, so long as it's not just one a breath. Like, is it wide enough two. for two abreast? I love you. Okay. Sure. I'd be more inclined to that, honestly. Alright. And he will take you to that. Oh, Liam, you're back to tanking. I put my shield away. <laughs> For now. I don't know. I mean, I've I got the... I still have the shield spell. Travel down the uh, the narrow path, or it uh, it perhaps is deliberately cut to you know like you have to really take your time to see the dwarven stonework that has been to actually smoothen this place. It looks a lot like a natural cave. Perhaps this is sort of on purpose as to disguise the uh, the place. It's sort of be hard to find just if you didn't know where it was. Uh, Riordan, I guess, will stay back. I guess so. He's, he's coordinating the caravan. Keeping, keeping Morella. He's, he's, in the, he's, yeah, middle of a, he's in the middle of a bardic ditty right now. But all the people. Well, part of me loves the idea of Riordan playing rock music back there. Okay. You can range yourself. You're going towards the door, as it as it were. Oh, I'm going to be in the front. He will be in the middle. Where you want him? Though he's a melee companion. He's a great sword. I'll just chill in the back. Yeah. I guess. As you move close, you'll see that there is a uh, a hobgoblin guarding guarding the door, standing leaned back, to the shadows of it. Uh, looking out as you approach with your light. Calls, Who goes there? Repeating it. Uh, both uh, goblin <laughs> under common Liam, and common. Liam will uh, step, from, uh, step forward, talking in orc. And Liam, he might know that, actually. Uh, no, say. he doesn't. No, it isn't. Oh, actually, I need to rest. That's all because this token is addressed. Oh, hang on. In that case, Liam will switch to uh, common as he says, I am Liam the Lightning. I have come seeking the band of mercenaries I have heard occupy this place. You have found us. What do you wish from us, stranger? Are you I... seeking to join? Yes, I am a swordsman of some skill and I have heard much about this place. He uh, 
looks to Liam suspiciously. Give me a, uh, a bluff check. Sorry. Perception. You can be allowed to get close to him without there. Uh... Here goes my awesome charisma of minus one, guys. This is going to be great. I mean, I'm sitting the last free diplomacy checks I did. Uh, oh, ho, ho. an 18. Wow, that. Not that's... slowly. Not oh, terrible. It's actually, it's actually pretty good. Very well, then. Who are the others? These are my servants. We'll uh, be leaving alone. this place soon. You seem able to travel. So, is he alone at this door? Uh, it seems so. All right. Is the door like what kind of door is it? It appears to be a stone door. Mm -hmm. Because you grab and slide. Okay. There's no. Uh... Or it's stone work. All right. Likely, um, if you're thinking of how he would alert someone, he would probably uh, uh, like like knock on the door and it would echo quite strong sure so we need to be fairly quick here supposedly well what if you can't move yes what if what if he couldn't how so that's that's always a question that i can't quite answer how loud is spell casting the rule, the speak in like, a clear, commanding voice, I yeah. think. I, I know, clear and confident voice. So as you're trying to, I think, as far as I'm aware, like trying try to imagine like speaking to a classroom of students kind of situation. It's pretty loud. It doesn't need to be, need to be overwhelming loud, but it needs to still be loud enough to carry a room. Yeah, but I'd say classroom, not not hall. Yeah, yeah, classroom, not 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 not, not lecture. Yeah. I'm casting a spell. <laughs> but if you can, if you know, if you can be clearly heard from one side, so from one from one side of a quiet room to another side of a quiet room, you know. I mean, would I think that casting a spell would alert everything? I mean, they've just Probably been talking, not. so you're quite from not. distance. He's talking. It's a stone door. Uh, but then again, such... Liam, they, these are hobgoblins. There's like 12 of them. We are on our way to fight demons. What are we exactly scared of here? Uh, Liam will attack. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think we are. I just want to get close, really. But we'll have a talk later about that. Uh, so. to surprise him, since so you should do that, uh, he'll smack against the door if you kill him, making a bunch of noise. Which means initiative. But let's see if you if you roll a one or something. <laughs> it uh, could happen. You have advantage in the attack. Wonderful. Uh, how armored does he seem to be? Very armored. Very armored. He's a hobgoblin. All right. In that case. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. 18 plus 18. 32. I, I suppose I can cut him? Yeah, like Liam, like, like suddenly in one fluid motion, like sweeps around his legs with, with his own, and in the same fluid motion unhooks his sword, he just cleaves down as he falls, he just cuts him in two. He like, <coughs> like armor breaking against the door as he falls down just cracking against it loud scraping sound as his like armored carcass like slides down against it well so it's loud, I guess. yeah but uh, let's have you all of initiative check shall we I'll just add that's Initiative. Or... The number of dice noises I get because I leave my map to a soundtrack. Alright. Now remember, we are going to let our dear buddy Hobgoblin here attack the big head honcho so that he can die. 
Mm -hmm. Sound comes well, whatever, out. Whatever he wants. The door is, uh, is slipped to the side. That's a, a big bugbear. Armored in chainmail and uh, the shield. Uh, sort of bulks out. Uh, seeing Liam stopping before taking a swing. Oh, I bet. Oh, oh, Captain, look at that guy. He looks so angry. Uh, yeah, I will, I will uh, activate my uh, my uh, shield here. All right. It's a reaction to have. Uh, let's see, what's that? AC uh, 23 AC for the rest of the turn. <laughs> A lot of uh, a lot of AC. Yeah, it is. got hate both of us when we trigger that. He will basically smack against the shield and then try again. Yep, sparks flying everywhere. Swinging the big mace, missing his surprise attack, which would be great. More sound of feet and uh, and goblinoid voices coming from inside. Probably regiments or whatever, whatever, whatever. Cold. Protocols they have. Really? Um, I mean, there's no real reason not to just come down and stop swinging, really. All right. Um, yeah, why not? Uh, so I'm going to swing for Bugbear, obviously. That's a hit. Um, and then... I haven't used this in a while. Um, I'm going to bring out Simi. As a bonus Simi action. Returns. The return of Simi! Uh, this is right next to the captain, but I guess that probably misses. Seem we have his revenge in Simi's revenge. Um. coming up next so I moved 30 down here I swung at him so I get to just uh, leave <laughs> as is as is my right <laughs> and that's my turn taking full advantage of your elven uh, right mm -hmm. there's the beauty of uh, of mobile being able People to your elven right we both do that all the time <laughs> yeah that's what we should call it Oh, the Elven right to disengage. Yeah. Or tank. Sound. Unable to get William to battle. He'll uh, actually stay back to let you guys get the space if you need it. Oh, I didn't see that there was a door here. I was like, he said that his place was going to be small, but one room. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good camp here. Just a yeah. single room for the centaurum to sit in. <laughs> they all play blackjack. That's all they do. They only need one table for that. And they've got two. The, uh, that's the door. The north is also slit away. Somehow, semi providing vision. <laughs> so, yeah. The hobgoblin wearing basically like a, what seems to be ceremonious, ceremonial robes, way tattered and, and old and gross than you actually would expect them to, to look like, even after this time in the underworld. 
uh, it's been a very long time since they've been repaired. And leather straps sort of take up a lot of uh, space. So you will move down to here. Uh, looking your direction uh, with a cold gaze, his eyes uh, seeing or tank, and then uh, just just for the frowning, really. Clearly not a popular person. Hmm. And then he will cast a spell. 